my latest hyperfixation has been Fashion Dreamer. When this game released, I was kind of like, when this was announced, I heard about it and I was like, okay, I'm all about it. Seems really interesting, kind of up my alley, kind of a cozy, chilled game. And then a couple days leading up to the release, I was like, you know what? Let's just bite the bullet and pre order it. So I finally pre ordered it and got it in the day of release, and I literally finished this game in one day. Like, I got to the credits in one day. Now you're probably thinking, oh my god, you are insane. This main story in this game isn't that long, so I was, it's pretty easy for anyone to like get to the um, to roll credits. However, the reason why I bring this game up, not just because I'm loving it and I've been literally spending hours on end and playing it ever since it's been released, it has kind of given me a huge wave and sense of nostalgia for all the games that I used to play when I was younger. Um, those games being girl games. Now for me, when I was growing up, gaming wasn't super, like to me honestly, gaming wasn't like super advertised, I feel like for me, for us girlies out there. So girl games were my cup of tea. So when I think of girl games, I think of going on barbiegirl.com and playing all the flash games of all the fashion makeover and dress up games and makeup styling games and all that and whatnot. And since playing Fashion Dreamer, it made me realize what happened to girl games. I know that girl games are still being made, but I feel like they're not as prominent as they were back when I was growing up. So I wanted to talk about what are girl games, because maybe some of you guys, may, um, some of you may not know what girl games are, what impact it has onto the gaming industry, and what impact it has today in 23, and whether or not you have to be a girl to play girl games. Just to let you know, you do not have to be a girl to play girl games. Anyone can play girl games. So without further ado, let's talk about girl games. So by definition, girl games refer to a category of video games that are typically designed to target a female audience. These games often feature themes, gameplay, aesthetics that are considered more appealing to girls and women. The history of girl games is a relatively recent development into the broader history of video games. So when I think of girl games, I think they have all kind of similar themes and gaming mechanics where you're whether it's a fashion styling game or a makeover game where you're making up a doll or whatever or a lot of the times when I was growing up in the 2000s and I was playing it a lot of the time you're either going to the mall buying new clothes and dressing up you and your friends and all that jazz so I feel like when girl games were in its come ups and its come ups in the beginning when girl games were becoming a more prominent thing into the game industry I feel like they were definitely catering towards a more feminine, more girl and woman demographic. And again, I want to reiterate this throughout this whole video that girl games are not limited to just girl and woman. Girls, women, boys, girls, they, them, non-binary, anyone could play girl games. So I just want to make that known. By the time I feel like early on in its days, it was just scary. They wanted to mon honestly monopolize on a demographic that was honestly not tapped into. Because I feel like back in the day, you definitely see games that were like really all about fighting and all that jazz that were definitely I feel like more gravitated towards boys but I'll talk into that more later on but since we now have a better grasp and idea and definition of girl games let's go into a brief history of how girl games began and where it has evolved today so in the early days of girl games, so I would say are anywhere from the late 1980s to 1990s, in the early days of video gaming, there were not many games specifically marketed as girl games. Most video games were gender neutral or targeted towards a male audience. However, there were a few exceptions, like Barbie and My Little Pony games were among the first attempts to create video games for girls. These early games were often simple and lacked complexity of the mainstream video games. So I feel like back then in that early 90s and um, early or late I'd say early 80s to like late 90s, a lot of the games that we were familiar with or introduced to at the time, because games were all games. Games were also being born at that time. You definitely think of arcade games, so like Street Fighters, Pac-Man, Mortal Kombat, sometimes Atari type games. Kind of simple like games like that. I wouldn't say simple because Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat are pretty gruesome games, even back then they were. And so I feel like at the time, especially when gender norms were very much a thing and societal pressures and what a girl and boy should be interested in um, playing in were definitely enforced back then. Because I feel like when I was growing up in the early 2000s, um, gender roles of like, girls should be playing with dolls and playing dress up while boys can play with their G.I. Joes and tanks and all that. I feel like that was definitely a very prominent thing at that time. And then definitely bled into the video gaming industry as well, where I feel like at the time, games like I mentioned before, Mortal Kombat, um, 
Street Fighter and all that kind of games like that were catered to more men, boys, and younger men at that time, where girls were kind of neglected into that aspect. More, I wouldn't even say neglected. I feel like they were kind of an afterthought or not even thought of. And so when they realized that games were a profitable medium of entertainment, they decided we should tap into all demographics. And I, and I feel like that's where girl games come in, especially in the 2000s, where I feel like this is where the rise and I feel like the peak of when girl games started to become more um, into fruition and more apparent into the everyday household, and especially when I was playing them. So in the 2000s, we saw a rise of casual gaming, which included many games with broad appeal, including women and girls. Girl Games like Bejeweled, Farmville, and The Sims attracted a significant female audience due to their accessible gameplay and non-violent themes. Also, I want to make note that big toy companies are also wanting to grab their bag as well because they noticed that gaming was becoming a more prominent and profitable source of um, income for the company. They thought it'd be a good way to tie in their merchandise with the gaming industry. So you saw a lot of toy companies and especially doll companies like Mattel with Barbie and My Scene, as well as Bratz, Polly Pocket, and whatnot incorporating video games to their merchandise as well. So for me, this is where I come in. I played a lot of those games. I feel like for me, I remember playing, and come, or at least coming back home from class or on the weekends going on barbiegirl.com and playing all the fashion makeover games, especially on Polly Pocket as well. Bratz was like my go-to. Um, I remember specifically even getting the PC game, and I think I mentioned this quite a bit at times onto this channel, but it is one of my favorite PC games that I played as a child, and that is Bratz Rock Angels. The PC version is the best way to play it. I tried emulating and playing the Game Boy and the GameCube, even the PS2, and I think they're all different, which is so weird, which I think is a common thing back then when they were trying to make licensed games. A lot of the games on different platforms were different per platform. Either way, I went on tangent. Bratz Rock Angels was a game that I played so much and repeated. The gameplay loop is pretty short. I think the entire the entire game is like about two hours at most, I think. E probably even shorter. Um, but it was based on a movie and I absolutely loved it. Researching more about this video, I decided to go online to see if those games were still alive. And someone created a website that literally has a compilation of every type of Flash game or girl game or website of those at that time, which was such a fun nostalgia trip and it made me realize how simple these games were they weren't very revolutionary or game changing but i remember spending so much time playing these games and my brother can testify to this i just had honestly even going back and playing these games i had a blast playing them one game that i do also remember playing as a child was specifically this thing called barbiegirl.com which was kind of barbie's take on an mmo <laughs> I know, crazy. But essentially what this game was is that you go into this whole Barbie world where you go, where you pretty much create a character, create a Barbie, and you pretty much go to like all these different destinations like the mall, um, the park, the mall, and your home. I feel like in the 2000s, mall culture was very much still a thing and alive and well, so mall culture in these type of games were like go hand in hand but I remember specifically I remember playing with my friend and at the time obviously we we're really young and didn't know what chat rooms were at the time but I remember I would pick up the phone and call her at like some turn a certain time in the day and we would just talk on the phone as we go to this area like hey go over to my house and we can hang out and like go around and I think of that game I don't think it really had chat options from what I can remember I had to look back at the videos of it but I just remember just playing on with her on the phone as you just go to like the certain malls of the park or kick with your friends so that was a memory that I don't I really wish they was someone could bring that back and if it still holds up today probably not because after playing some of these games on that website a lot of them were very boring and definitely a game that you play once and you're good to go but again these games felt so much fun and it honestly gave us such cool space for us girlies or um to play which was cool because again at the time when I uh, what I felt is that Again, games weren't really meant for girls, it seemed, it seemed like for me. So being able to have a space where I could play games that are similar to my interests was really fun. And to share that experience with my friends as well was awesome. Now we move on to the 2010s where social media and mobile games come into play. The proliferation of smartphones and social media platforms in the 2010s gave rise to new wave of girl-targeted games. Titles like Candy Crush Saga, Kim Kardashian Hollywood, and Dress Up 
an episode were games that became highly popular among the female gamers. These games often incorporated elements of fashion, lifestyle, and social interaction. Now, I really do clearly remember playing the Kim Kardashian Hollywood game. I don't, I was, I think, I maybe a, hmm. What grade was I in? I think I was a senior in high school, or maybe a, or was I a soft or junior? Either way, I was in high school at the time when Kim Kardashian Hollywood and everyone was playing it in my school. Pretty much with Kim Kardashian Hollywood, the brace premise is that you are an inspiring influencer because you weren't really like, I mean, you could do acting, I think. I think that game, app and game is still around, but like you pretty much wanted to like crack your like self in or crack yourself into break. That's the word I'm looking for. Break into the Hollywood sphere and circle and like rise to fame and that was pretty much the whole premise of it so you would go from i think f rank to like s rank i think of or a list no i think it's an a list celebrity an a list celebrity you and then during that time you pretty much like dressed up made connections and all that jazz i think the reason why this game did so well is that it had interesting aspects of you know the fashion and makeover elements that most girl games have, but it also had a more social aspect, so you got to make connections and make friends. And I think there were romance options in this game, if I can remember. I haven't played this game since high school, and that's been over 10 years ago, so that's what I remember from that game, and that was a definitely a big thing. Also, The Sims community. I think The Sims has been around for ages, since the 90s, but I think The Sims has been a predominantly female um, dominant um, demographic which makes sense because we also love designing. We love wrecking havoc in those games. Cause you may think Sims is a wholesome game, but no, some of these challenges that y'all are making are unhinged and crazy. But either way, those are the games that definitely became more of a, evolved as the time um, went on and more companies and game developers realized what girl gamers or girl games were, um, what people wanted out of girl games. Which leads today, what do girl games look like in 2023? As the gaming industry continued to evolve, developers recognized the need for diversity in game offerings for different audiences. This led to a broader range of girl games, including those featuring action, adventure, puzzle solving, role playing, in addition to traditional fashion and makeover games. We are in a time and space where girl games are not just set for or meant for just girls or meant for anyone to play and they realize that us girls don't just love fashion and makeover because as much as fun as that is, we also like other elements such as action and role playing and storytelling. As someone who loves to read on her, um, as another hobby of mine, I emphasize a good story and I feel like whether I can create that story in a game or the story is already embedded into the game, that's what draws people in today. I think that's what girl gaming has evolved into today is that there are more to just the fashion aspects and elements to it that we also want to experience maybe shooting at people or exploring a really intense heart aching story or just you know want to spend our time just dressing up in cute characters and fashion dreamer also, it's important to note that not all female gamers are interested in traditionally labeled girl games. Many girls and women enjoy a wide variety of games, including action, sports, and competitive multiplayer titles. The gaming industry has increasingly embraced inclusivity and diversity, aiming to create games that appeal to a broad spectrum of players. I think that's such an important thing to iterate that a lot of girls today, girls, women, whoever you may be, enjoy games of all as a spectrum and all aspects and elements and it's important to recognize that too whether they be in the esports community or in a call of duty uh, campaign i don't play call of duty so i don't know that's not my thing but there are other women who love those games nonetheless and should have a space in those communities as well so the bottom line is that uh, gaming is for, for everyone. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in educational games for girls and women, as well as games that empower and inspire. These games often focus on promoting STEM, science, technology, and engineering and mathematics. Education addressing issues such as gender equality as well. It's important to know that in the gaming industry today that we should open a space for everyone and there should be room for everyone at the table. Being able to see women developers creating games for women or for everyone, allowing to have this is a safe space and also see us being represented as well in games is super important and also be respectable for those people who are creating those spaces as well because again like I mentioned before this industry and market has been dominated by 
one gender for a, a long time, and so now we're in the space where more people of other um, genders, um, sexualities, ethnicities are being able to have space and share their stories as well, which I think is super important and honestly a beautiful and amazing thing to see. Girl games have come a long way from the early and simple releases to more inclusive, varied games that cater to a wide range of age and interests. The goal of the gaming industry is to make games that are entertaining and interesting for all players, and is always adapting to shifting society views and tastes. So if you guys enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below what is your favorite girl game out there. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one. Bye!